What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Kanisha, again, back with another video on today. So, as you can see by the title and the thumbnail, this will be a story time. I had, um, the last time I checked my, um, uh, my notifications, I did receive a, um, a text from one of my subscribers um, requesting for me to do a story time. So, um, this story time would be called I Am Becoming, and it's just basically, I apologize you all if it's really bright, I'm actually in the park um, filming this video, it's very hot today outside and very sunny, but um, I feel like um, I have became a very strong woman, you know, as I grew older in life, um, growing up, coming from um, Chicago, I was born and raised in the city of, I mean, I was born and raised in Chicago, um, on the west side of Chicago. Um, my growing, like I said, my childhood, I had a pretty good childhood coming up. My, um, my, um, I was raised um, by my mom. My father, he wasn't never really in my life. From my understanding, um, when I, when I was a baby, he, you know, probably came around a couple times, but I have no knowledge of, you know, him being in my life. I know my mom, she basically raised me on her own. Um, she did have to work a lot going in my growing up. Um, most time, she, you know, she would try to make sure she provided the best she could for me and my um, siblings and stuff like that. Um, I know I was mostly like I grew up in the church. I was baptized at 13, so the church I went to, um, it was a church because um, when I was growing up, my mom had a sitter for us, like a nanny. So the nanny that um, you know was help, you know, was helping her um, watch us. Um, she mostly was into church a lot. So like I said, I stayed in the church. So like I said, that's when um, I joined. I was well, I got baptized at 13. Um, as the years grew, I never thought that I would, you know, um, I never thought tough times would hit me, you know, as I got older. I know growing, growing, growing up, like I say, um, going to school, I really didn't have friends. I, you know, mostly was made fun of because I couldn't afford to wear certain, you know, name brand clothing and things like that. So I would say my my middle school years, they was they wasn't as bad as high school years, but they was bad. Um, I never forget. I used to get picked on and talked about a lot, you know, uh, coming up, and it kind of had made me feel some type of way, like you know, uh, why is kids, you know, picking with me? But but, but you know, I'm, I'm learning every day that kids can be really cruel at times and stuff like that. So um, you just never know, you know, because I'm learning now as an adult, sometimes kids can, uh, it can be based off what, you know, their experience and um, when they, at, you know, what they see um, or hear um, adults do and stuff. So sometimes like, you know, they, uh, you know, pick up what they see or hear other, you know, uh, adults do. That's why I'm learning as a adult now to how, you know, watch what I say, even around my daughter, you know, as I'm, um, adult at the, you know, as I'm, as I became an adult. But, um, like I say, my childhood, my, like I said, my father wasn't ever really in my life. Um, doing, I would say, um, uh, my uncles, my mom, brothers, she had three brothers. They took up more time with me and my siblings more than my, my, my dad did. They took us to amusement parks and, you know, just basically took up time with us, you know? So as I got older, I looked at my uncles more as a father figure than I did my own dad. When I finally met my father, I was 19 years old. And, um, I, um, I had recently, because I graduated, when I graduated out of high school, it was the year 2004. I graduated from a high school called Reason Or Community Academy High School. It was one of the roughest high schools on the west side of Chicago. Um, the school mostly sometimes stayed on the news a lot. You know, it was really that bad. Um, sometimes I wish I never really had to go to that school, but at that time, you know, um, going in Chicago, it was, they basically sent you, placed you in schools according to your score. So if you had like a low score or whatever score you had, it really was part that I didn't understood. You know, I feel like they should have just let me get out of the way. I missed about two points on the, um, what was that like? It was something like an ACT test, like, cause I know here in Memphis, they do like ACT and stuff like that. So basically the test and they retook that I had to take in Chicago was something like a SAT. And I missed by two points. And that's what made me have to go to this school. But um, 
as I got older, I really didn't let it, you know, too much get to me. But I do kind of at times suffer from like, you know, um, depression and stuff like that. You know, it's something that I think because um, I feel like because my dad, he really wasn't in my life. And that kind of played a part, you know, he had other children as well. Like he had other kids, not by my mom, but, you know, um, other women. Um, I met one of my brothers when I was 15. Um, actually, I met two of my brothers. I take that back. One of my brothers on my father's side, a little older than me. Then the next brother I met, he next, he next to me in age. So it's like all my father kids, like we kind of around in the same age bracket, maybe two, three years apart from one another. So on my dad's side, I got four brothers and one sister. I met my sister. I actually met my sister through social media, which is crazy. Um, I met my sister on Facebook. Um, she inboxed me and I didn't know who this was and she was just letting me know that you know hey you my sister and you know we kind of start talking from there just you know trying to get to know each other that's why I say I'm learning everyday social media it's the way how you use it you know um, it could be useful in some ways and it, it just all depends on how you use it so I was just excited because I thought you know like I said on my mom's side my mom had three kids it's just I'm the oldest on my mom's side and I have a sister and brother on my mother's side, so it felt good to have, which I'm older, I'm older than my sister on my dad's side too, but we, you know, we kept talking, kept in contact, and then I would say a couple years, I would say maybe two or three years later, she kind of, kind of changed up on me, like she really didn't want to be bothered, that's why I'm learning every day, uh, when I'm sharing certain personal things with people, you know, not to just, you know, overshare certain things no more, because sometimes you have to ask yourself if a person have an ear to hear, you know, um, I, I have lost, like I said, I have lost um, people that I thought was my friend due to me oversharing certain things, but at that time, you know, I just felt like I needed somebody to talk to because I got tired of just keep, you know, holding so much within, you know. And I never really just had nobody that I really can just talk to. So I was just kind of vent to this person thinking that they really, you know, have an ear to hear. But in reality, they got tired of hearing. Basically, they say they have problems of their own. So I, that's why now in this day and time, I don't really overshare certain things with no one no more. I just, you know, pray about it and keep it moving because I don't have time for people to be negative, you know, t towards me. Um, I would say... In 2006, I wanted to make a change. I got tired of being in Chicago. Um, I moved to Memphis in November of 2006, and I've been here since. Um, I moved down here because I was ready for a change. I was ready to better myself. One thing, one goal that I'm very proud of myself for doing since I've been here was getting my degree. That was something I always wanted to do because don't get me wrong, when I had graduated out of Chicago, I mean, grad I'm sorry, you are. When I graduated uh, from um, the high school that I was attending in Chicago, um, it was either college or work. One thing about my family, my growing up, um, education was always important. Education was always important. My great grandmother, she made sure that, you know, even me, I had to, you know, she made sure that I even finished school because I, the high school that I graduated from in Chicago was not too far from down the street where she stayed there. So some some days, if I didn't feel like going home, I caught the bus then to, um, I stayed down the street from the school too. But sometimes it was some days where I would get tired, I had to catch the bus or walk. I would just stay over my great grandma's house and, you know, went to school from there. Uh, it was at a point where, um, I, I thought it would probably be like a little temporary thing, but then come to find out years later, I would end up have to move in with her, and then that what made me stay. Then that kind of caused me to stay and live with her, and then I went to school. You know, I continue to still go to school from her because my mom, um, she ended up moving to Memphis. So my, my mother, sister, and brother moved here before me. They moved down here like, what, 2002? And they've been here since. And then, like I say, I didn't move here until 2006 because I was trying to finish high school up there. I was informed that if I would have moved down here to another state that they probably would have held me back a year. And I didn't want that because I was actually held back a year uh, from school. So really I was supposed to graduate in 2003, but I came out in 2004, a year later. I was held back one year. 
So that what kind of took a toll on the process for me getting, you know, finished with school. I was just ready to get up out the school, y'all. I mean, it was just, it was a lot. I really didn't like the high school that I went to. Like I told y'all, I was getting picked on, made fun of all the time. And, you know, it just, it just was a lot. So I just was ready for a change. Like I said, I moved down here in 2006, been here since. Um, when I was, um, only thing I regret is when I, I was staying in Chicago, I went out to college after I graduated high school because I wanted to get more career, you know, career advancement before I went out to the workforce to gain, you know, more knowledge. College always been um, a thing for me. Like, it really wasn't a big deal in my family. My family just was worried about you finishing middle school and high school after that you was on your own because they considered you grown so if you wanted to go to college there's you know there's basically on, on, on your behalf it was either college or work whatever you chose to do but they they main issue was for you to finish high school and, and, and middle school so i didn't finish um college in chicago i went to an art institute back then i used to love to draw I still, every blue moon i might draw and sketch pictures in the college i the college i went to was called the Illinois Art, uh, um, the Illinois Art Institute in Chicago, one of obviously a very expensive college. I couldn't afford it. I ended up had to take out student loans. You know, I, I thought this was really something that I had wanted to do. You know, I, I, at the time, like I say, when I was going to the school, I was, you know, it was a lot because I couldn't keep up. I couldn't really afford. I really couldn't afford the school. I thought when I took the loans out that it would cover my tuition, but apparently it didn't. So that kind of took a toll on me where that I had to um, I had to resign from the school and kind of just basically drop out. Um, and it really hurt my feelings because, you know, college always meant something that I wanted to pursue and, and, and accomplish someday. So when I went to um, when I moved here to Memphis, I ended up um, attending. I, well, I, the first time I, I, I tried to get into Southwest Tennessee Community College, I'm going to tell you how, to, how God were things in your favor. He might not come when you want him, but he always on time. I tried to apply for Southwest in 2013, I would say. Yeah, 2013, because I had my mindset made up that I'm ready to go back to school. I'm ready to get a degree in something. Even if I choose not to use the degree right away, I'm ready to get a degree. I want to just be able to say I'm proud of myself that I accomplished something, that I did something, you know, um, that I always wanted to do. So I tried to apply for Southwest Tennessee Community College um, in 2013. I didn't get in right away because what messed me up, I listed a school and the college needed that documentation showing that I went to the school. So I didn't get in right away. Um, so I would say maybe two years later, I reapplied for Southwest and I didn't list that school this time because the lady told me one of the, um, one of uh, the, the what's that one of the uh the uh workers there she told me that if I, if I never wanted to listen to that school I, I could have almost got in but see I never you know I didn't think I didn't think about that and I tried two years later and when I say God is good I was able to get into the school I had only thing I had to do I had to call up to my school I mean I had to call go through Chicago call up to Chicago and ask and request a high school transcript from when I was in high school so it can be mailed to me here in Memphis so that they can see that paperwork and then that um, I can be able to register so after I got all that documentation together I was able to register and, and I was able to you know start my classes and I was so happy, y'all, because it was just, it was such a stressful situation because I had been wanting to try to get into this school. That's why I say when when um, doors close, you know, in some situations it's not meant to try to push that door open. But if it's something that you really want to do and something you determine, you're going to keep working hard till you, you know, succeed at it. And so when that door finally opened for me, um, I was just happy. You know, I was glad. I'm like, man, I'm about to start school and stuff like that. Um, as I was in college, like I say, y'all know my do I do have a daughter, 15 years old. Um, her dad, he's from Memphis. Um, I was 22 years old when I had got pregnant with her. And so my school, one thing I, I'm thankful for with my, um, my mother and sister, they always made sure she was good. They watched her while I was in school and college. So I didn't really have to worry about putting her in no daycare or nothing like that. So that was a blessing, you know. 
because I know daycares can be expensive. If you know back then it was expensive, so I can imagine how much the prices is now due to you know the high inflation and everything was going on in the world today. But I, w I didn't have to worry about putting her in daycare. They made sure she was good and they watched her and stuff like that. So it was just a blessing to be back in school. Like I say, my my um, my um, field of study was nutrition, diet tech technician. I was so happy to just be able to just be in college. It's like I would be in school. I would stay after school to make sure my, I, my grades was good my studies, you know, making sure I'm on point with everything. Cause I, my, my, the, the mindset I had when it was coming down to college, I was trying to be a strictly an honor roll student, which I have became. It took a journey for me to get there, to become an honor roll student. Because when you've been out of high school for so many years and you're trying to refresh your memory, it can be very challenging, you know? So, um, like I say, during my college years, it, they were smooth. The devil, he still tried to find ways to get me distracted, steal my joy and stuff like that. I really mostly stayed to myself. Um, like I say, Memphis is, you know, was a new town to me and I really didn't know nobody here. Most of the people that I have came to know if I met them, you know, at school or on a bus or something like that or even on a job. Um, my my senior year in college, I had the, uh, no, well, not my junior year. The program that I studied, which is nutrition, you have to make a C or above in order to continue on with the program. So my score, uh, my my third year, I kind of lack a little bit. Like my, my grades wasn't uh, too good. I think I had like two A's, one B, and a D. And my um, instructor told me, you know, just to retake the course over and, um, you know, go from there. So when I retook the course over, I got a C. It was, it, like I say, college was pretty, like I said, if you've been out of school for so long, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. College can be, it, it was, it was really hard, you know, trying to refresh your memory, but, um, it was just a blessing to be in there. I, I was just glad to be back in school. You know, here I am trying to worry about how I can better myself and, you know, better to let you know when my daughter get older let her know if mommy can do it you can do it too so that was just a whole mindset and um and two and so it took me two years it, t it took me this is a two-year institution that I went to y'all it took me four years to graduate from a two-year community college when I say math was my worst subject Math was my worst subject. It took me, I had to take two math courses at that, my senior year of college. I had to take a, a statistic class, just by the name of it sound like it's hard, and it was hard. And I had to take a, a elementary algebra. Now algebra was always one of my worst subjects because even in high school, I struggled with algebra. I struggled with math. So when I finally, I would stay out to school to get help from the instructors and stuff like that. One thing I like about Southwest and what I tell people, they, it's a good school. I don't care regardless of what kind of, you know, uh, what people say about the school, it's a good school. I like how their resources were set up where if you, um, if you miss a, like you had to make a 70 or above. It, even though I was, uh, even though the classes was on the computer, you still had to be present in the class. And I, one thing I like about it, I, um, it was just a blessing to be able to keep retaking the test over until you get a better score. So that's what um, the instructor I had, he did it where if I miss a point, miss by one point, I was able to retake the test over. So. It was a blessing when I finally got my scores, my test scores at the end of the um, semester, and I seen that I passed with an A and a P, P me pass for one of the courses in the other class. It was just a regular standard grade letter, A, B, you know, C or whatever. So when I say God is good out of, I was one out of 1,015 uh, students to walk across the stage on May 13th. 2017, I walked across the stage and I got my associate, applied associate science degree in dad tech technician. And I was just so proud of myself because I was, you know, I never thought I could do it because growing up, you know, being made fun of, I was always taught that, you know, and even going to college, I have had people that knew me personally say, I never thought you would make it. I never thought you would do it. I never thought you would make it because of what you was going through. So, that sh and then when it happened, that showed a lot of people that, you know, your beliefs, you know, what you thought of 
God has something better than plan for her. So I learn every day is, you know, I feel like I'm becoming a very strong woman, you know, and God is good all the time, despite of, you know, what have happened to me in my past. I'm, I'm learning every day to just use my past as a, a, um, a lesson learned to help me move forward in life, you know, because I know you can't dwell on the past because sometimes the past can really, you know, it'll drive you crazy if you worry about it so much. So as I got older, I, I don't really let little things bother me. And even as an adult, um, I think one thing that's really stuck with me, and I'm praying every day, um, I want to try to just include everything how I'm feeling in this in this video, though I'm trying to not make it too long, but I wish I would have made better choices as friendships and relationships-wise with people. I wish I would never, like, certain people I wish I would never gave time a day to, and others I wish I would, you know, walked away. But like I say, you have to learn people. You know, sometimes people can show you their true colors, even with, like, a relationship. Y'all know, um, I talked about this in a video a while back. I, I don't know the link, how to share the link on this video, but I was talking about how God delivered me from toxic relationships. You know, I was dating a young, uh, dating a young man during my, my college years. Um, me and him met um, at the bus stop. And I never thought that, uh, come to find out a couple months later, that we would actually be talking and dating and stuff like that. And then years from now, you know, um, you know, we, we was together for like, what, five years? And then he proposed to me on his birthday. But to come to find out, he really wasn't really ready for marriage. And it really did something to me because marriage is always something that I desire. And I pray that it come true someday. I, I, even now, I still, you know, pray for um, my future husband, you know. And it made me feel some type of way because I bought a wedding dress. I made flowers and stuff like that. I still have a wedding dress right today hanging up in my closet. And then I also have, I just kept one of the bouquets that I made the rest of them I threw away because it was just taking up too much space in my closet. When I had did a closet clean out this year, I didn't want to keep it. I just said when that time of day happened, I'll just remake some more because, um, I'm, you know, I'm going to change my colors anyway. Look at me, y'all, speaking in existence, in existence, but I'm praying that it do happen for me because, like I say, I'm a good, I'm a good person. And I don't understand why it's so hard for me to find, you know, the, 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 a decent guy. I'm not going to say the right guy because it's nobody in this world perfect, you know, nobody perfect. I just want somebody that's decent and decent enough to, you know, uh, to know that I'm, I'm capable, I'm worthy enough, and not somebody to just out to use me or take advantage of me because that's what happened to me in the past. That's what made me not want to date again. Um, I just decided after that happened with the uh, false, you know, the false alarm with the engagement, just to kind of remain single for a little while, and that's why I have did until um, up until now. You all know I've been talking about my little friend that I'm, you know, currently dating at the moment. But before I met him, I, I just, I just was my mindset was just focused on just, you know, letting God send the person He designed for me. And um, even with this year, when this year came in, I had drew, I, ma I made a vision board for a lot of things that I wanted to come true. And on the vision board, I was praying for even for increasing in my finances because y'all know I told y'all I've been through so, so many different jobs too since I've been to Memphis, under, under, underpaid jobs. And then where I'm currently at, it's funny how things work. I tried to apply for this hotel way before the pandemic. This, the job that I'm currently working at, the door didn't open for me then. And so some just told me to re, you know, just try to apply again. Usually when the door closed, I don't want to keep trying the same doors, but at this time, I really needed a job and I just wanted to, you know, find something like that. Cause you know how it is. You need your money. You gotta make your money. So I reapplied for this job um, this year, April twenty twenty three. It's saying I would say March, cause right after my birthday, during the month of my birthday, my birthday in March, I decided to apply for a job. The job. So I ended up applying for this job, and um, I, I, you know, I had three interviews. I was uh, very nervous, cause I never had a job where they had two people interview you at one time. Then you have to come back for a second interview. So when I say he's, God is good, it was a blessing to get in this door. And when I say this is the best door I work, this is the best hotel I've ever worked since I've been here. They feed you. 
You don't have to pay meals. Everybody make you feel like family. Everybody speaking. You, you'll never know some of these people having a bad day like me because they keep smiles on their face, you know. It's just amazing how God is really working things out in my for my behavior. I mean, how he working things out in my life. I mean, he has been very good to me. Um, but like I say, it's just a really be nice for, and I'm praying every day. Y'all know I told y'all I'm on this self-love journey. I pray every day that I can walk down the aisle someday, you know, because it's just, it's just that's another goal I want to accomplish, you know. I just want to know how it just feels to just, you know, I, of course, I'm always love on me, you know. I'm not looking for a man to make me feel worthy when I know I feel worthy. Like, I know I love myself. I'm just looking for him to add on into my life to help, you know, maybe keep pushing me to, you know, pursue my goals, which I'm going to continue doing that myself. But it's nothing like having that, that male presence in your life as well. So I'm not looking for him to make me happy because I'm going to be happy regardless. I'm going to find happiness in some. But, yeah, when I say things that's been going working out for my favor and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just trusting God in everything I do. Um, you know, sometimes I learn one thing about Maya, what Maya Angelou said, when a person show you they true colors, believe them. Believe them. You have to believe because if you keep holding on to people and they don't want to be held on to, it's like you wasting your time and stuff like that. You know, some people just, you know, I'm learning every day. Some people come into your life for a season and, um, some people, uh, will come into your life to be a blessing. So I can teach you a lesson. Um, just let people go. I, that's one thing was hard for me is to learn to let people go because, like I say, I was always felt like, man, why folks don't want to put up with me, you know? But when I'm learning that he has something better in store for you, your journey is not for everyone to understand. Your journey is not for people to follow you on. So if a person want to just disappear and up and leave out your life, let them go. You know, I had to make some tough decisions this year because I am I was the type, I was always the person who always reached out to people. I'm always contacting people, calling people, checking on people. But when I had to learn to let people go and I feel like these people didn't want to be bothered with me no more, I, I, I just, I had, to, I had to stop. I had to say, Nisha, it's time for you to just let it be. Stop holding on to people who don't want to be holding on to. Just continue to trust the process, you know. So that's really what got me, even to this day, I got even more closer with God. Y'all know I tell y'all I stay connected in my word. I have to read my Bible. Like even now, when I get ready and leave this part, because I'm actually, um, I told y'all my goal for this week is to work on two videos. I'm going home. I'm going to take me a shower. It's really hot too, y'all. Take me a shower and get into my word because God is good. I mean, he's really good. You know, I can't, you know, I know everybody has their beliefs and stuff like that, but I know what he have done for me personally. He have really saved me a lot. He saved my life just like he gave me life. You know, he brought me through a lot because when I say I was in a very deep depression mode, it was to the point where I started to feel like, what's my purpose for living? Because bad things are study happening to me. Why is all this study, this bad stuff happening to me? Then um, a couple years ago, I almost got hit by a car where I could have died. I mean, the person could have hit me instantly and I could have, he could have, you know, I could have been been not here. You know, I, I, I probably wouldn't be here, you know, but felt like God pushed me out that street for a reason, you know. So that's why I, I talk about him and a lot of my, you know, I include him in my vlog. I mean, I, I y'all see me um, even in a lot of my videos. I always probably show y'all me reading my Bible and, and what you see in the videos is what's what that is behind the camera. What you see me doing my videos, this is how I'm is in real life. So if I'm reading my Bible, I'm definitely reading it off the camera too. So, you know, because uh, I know sometimes people tend to judge people. Oh, they, you know, doing this for social media. No, what you see on social media is just like you'll see if you was running to me in real life. That's how I am mean, off camera. I read my Bible. I stay in my word. I like to read books. You know, I always like to find ways to protect my peace. I come out here like I'm here in nature and stuff like that. It, I have to stay encouraged because we're living in times now where, you know, the devil is busy and he'll try to make you feel some type of way. So, but, um, yeah, yeah, he's good. He's been good to me. Like I said, I have became an amazing, amazing person from, from being in my 20s until now my 30s. I have learned a lot. Like, I don't really... 
um, go out that much. Like when I was in my early 20s, I used to love to go out to the club every blue moon or, you know, hang out with my friends, have fun. Not, not saying it's wrong, something wrong with that because every now and then I'm one man going to like a little tavern. But now, but in this day and time, it's just so much going on. So I'm more of a homebody. But every blue moon, I did say I need to get out more because all I do is work a lot. But, um, yeah, I, um, I learned a lot from my 20s to my 30s. I know there's a now in the age difference. In my 30s, I'm more relaxed and observant. Now, when I was in my 20s, I didn't really see, you know, a lot in people. Now, while in my 30s, I ain't going to say I can try to pick out which person is right. I, I just learned to now, as I got older, to try to give a person a chance to see if they're capable of me, you know, if they're capable of being in my life or not. And like I tell folks, it's really funny when you um like how you go on the job they interview you it's almost the same thing about people who you allow in your life it's almost like you need to start interviewing people before you allow them in your life because you just never know what people people minds are intentions sometimes people can be jealous of you and stuff like that but you you just never know y'all you just never know but i just tell you all you know this is a little look i didn't want to make this video too too long but this is just some of the um a little sh little sh small little story time i wanted to share more story times will be um coming but i just want to encourage you all to just continue